In today's fabric purse repair video, I'm going to share with you how I cleaned and repaired this cute handbag for my daughter very quickly and easily with no fancy equipment. Let's get started. Hi everyone, welcome to Uni Crafts. If this is your first time here, this is a crafts and home improvement channel committed to donating a percentage of all ad revenue to charities of your choice. You can find out more in the about section of Uni Crafts. Let's go ahead. A few months ago, my daughter received this little purse as a gift from a friend. Incidentally, last week, my other daughter received an identical purse as a gift too. Now, while both the girls are playing together, one of their bags was looking decidedly older and scruffier compared to the newer one. So, while the girls are at school, I will try to freshen up the tired looking older bag. And even though these are cheap kids bags, you can use this method for any old fabric handbag or purse you might have lying around the house that is looking for a bit of TLC. Let's do this. Now here as you can see are both the bags sitting side by side. The one on the right is a newer one and the one on the left is a slightly older one. And the one big difference that you can see between the two bags is probably the crispness of the bag. The one on the left, which has been used more, is decidedly looking softer, a bit poofier, while the one on the right looks really crisp and it has got fresh crisp lines running everywhere. There are also little appliques on the lid of the bag. And the older bags appliques have turned a bit softer, the butterflies which have been appliqued on, their wings are lifted up. Along with that, the tiny little applique flowers, they've got a little tutu cut out on top of it and that has turned all curly and it's not sitting flat, which is adding to the look of the bag looking a little bit scruffy, a little more tired than the new bag. Finally, the lighter pink of the bag on the left is looking a little more dirtier, a little more worse for wear compared to the new one because it's such a light pink color and kids use these bags roughly so the fabric does get a little bit dirty so it's not looking as fresh as a new bag. So today I'm going to try and address all of these issues and see how well we do at the end of it. Let's go ahead. My first priority is to clean the bag or get it as clean as possible. For this I simply took a large bowl and added a little bit of liquid detergent to it, followed by some warm water to create a soapy mixture that'll help me clean the bag. Now I took a clean cloth and I dipped one corner of it into this soapy detergent mixture and I squeezed any extra water out and I started rubbing it on top of the lighter pink areas of the bag to try and get rid of any muck that might have been there. Overall, the bag is pretty clean but it is looking a bit dull and tired and this soapy detergent mixture is bringing out the lovely fresh pink of the fabric beautifully. And to really shift any dirt and stains, I use my soft bristled dishwashing brush and I dunk it in this detergent mixture, shake out any extra soapy mixture and I simply scrub it gently across the surface of this pink fabric and that really gets the dirt out of the fabric really well. And I repeat this process until I've covered all the lighter areas of the bag, which is essentially the inside of the lid and the front inside of the bag. Oh, and the back as well. That's light pink too, so I do it there as well. After scrubbing the light bits with soapy water, I change the water in the bowl to just fresh clean water. And I dunk the clean rag into that water, give it a good wring out. And I wipe away any soapy residue from the bag using a clean wet rag. And that gets rid of most of the detergent on the bag. Now it's time to clean the darker bits of the bag. And for this, I use my favorite all-time cleaning solution. It's this cheap liquid called Elbow Grease. And it's one of the best things that I've discovered of late. And I simply spray a tiny bit of this liquid onto one corner of the rag and I rub it over the darker bits and the edging as well as the long handle of the bag and it works very precisely very very quickly 
and it starts to eat away at any grime and stains which were there immediately. As I clean, I keep rinsing the opposite corner of the rag with fresh clean water and I use it to keep rinsing off the fabric very very gently to remove any residue of elbow grease from the bag. And so like this, working in sections, I end up cleaning all of the darker parts of the bag. To clean the strap, I first lay the strap out flat and I clean one side of it and then I gradually turn the strap over and work on the opposite side so that the strap is nice and clean on either side and I rinse it out as well. The bag is a little bit wet now so to dry it out a little bit I use a clean tea towel. It's pure cotton and highly absorbent. I lay the bag flat out on top of it and I fold one edge over and then I press it down so that it can absorb lots of water or as much water as it possibly can. And I repeat this on all parts of the bag along with the strap so that I can remove as much excess moisture as possible before working further on the bag. Before we move on, I just wanted to say a huge thank you for watching the videos here. You must have seen a bar flashing at the bottom of this video. This is the amount of money that you have helped raise for charity through Uni Crafts, and all of these charities are listed on the channel's main banner. So please do go check that out. If you want to help the cause, absolutely free of cost, you can take the one view wonder challenge. All you have to do is watch one more video here without skipping any ads. For further details, please do read the about section of Uni Crafts. And now let's move on. To dry the bag fully, I simply use my hair dryer. I made sure that I have chosen the cool setting because this bag does have elements of HDB along with some polyester materials used in the applique and I don't want to burn them with warm or hot air. So making sure that the hairdryer is blowing out cool air, I simply used it to gently dry the bag completely from the inside and on the outside. I then took a pair of scissors and tidied away any little bits of thread that might be sticking out, any old threads which have come loose or come undone or which are just sticking out for no particular reason, I simply snip those little threads away. Now I take the same clean tea towel and I fold it over multiple times and then I rolled it up really tightly to turn it into a kind of like a little cylinder which would sit perfectly inside the little bag and I stuffed it tightly inside the bag. And now I took some spray starch and I sprayed it very lightly on the front and back of the bag. Along with that, I ran a tiny bit of it along the bag's strap as well. It's time to do some ironing now. I took my steam iron and on a low heat setting, I started to press down on the different planes of the bag, making sure that that roll of tea towel that I've stuffed inside the bag, I'm holding firmly onto it and that's kind of acting as a little support or a little ironing surface on the inside of the bag, which helped me give some nice crisp lines to all of the seams and all of the planes of the bag. Now, a key difference between the new bag and this old or used bag is that the bias binding, that turquoise bias binding that you see around the lid, that lays down perfectly flat on the new bag, but it tends to pucker and curl up on the old bag. And so in order to iron it down really nice and flat, I tightly rolled up the tea towel and then I rolled up the lid of the bag around that roll. And then I put another tea towel on top of it to protect the bag's surface. And then I pressed down on this lid of the bag uh, or the flap of the bag very, very slowly and gently working in sections. And it was very important to use the second tea towel to cover it up because those little roses that you see, that's actually HTV. Um, and it tends to stick and burn and melt if you put it in direct contact with the heat. So the tea towels were doing a fabulous job here. And as I work along before long, the flaps bias binding is sitting beautifully flat and crisp. 
Now let's zoom into the little flowers on the surface of the bag and as you can see that this is actually a double layered flower. There's a little felt flower at the bottom and then on top of it there's a tiny little net flower which is supposed to sit flush on the flower, at least on the new bag. But because of use, the netting has curled up and which is adding to the effect that this is a very used bag. So I took my fabric glue and I gently dabbed a tiny, tiny dot of it to the felt underneath the netting. And then I used a little uh, bamboo skewer or a bamboo stylus to press down the netting and sit it flush down on top of the felt. Now this fabric glue is going to dry clear eventually as you must have seen in the sofa repair video here as well. And so I'm not worried that I can see it right now. I know it's gonna dry clear and before long, these flowers will be looking as good as new. And that's it. Once that glue is dry, we are done. And here you can see the final reveal. The bag on the right is a new one. And the one on the left is the older bag, uh, which had a slightly faded denim shade. So the darkness of the bag has got nothing to do with how new it is. The shade of the blue was different. These bags do vary in the depth of the blue. But here, as you can see now, the bag is looking beautifully crisp and fresh. It smells amazing as well because of the detergent I used. Uh, the butterflies, the flowers, everything is sitting nice and flat and the ironing created some lovely crisp seams which match the newer bag too. All in all, I'm really happy with the way this turned out and it gave me an idea of how to refresh any of my other handbags if they're looking a bit tired. In the grand scheme of things, I suppose, if this process can save even a single usable bag in your wardrobe from ending up in the landfill, then I think it's been well worth the while. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, do hit that like button please and consider subscribing and taking the one view wonder challenge. Thank you so much for watching and I shall see you soon. Bye!